Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132, which will talk a little bit more about Ohm's Law. This video assumes that you have already read about Ohm's Law in your textbook, and therefore know that the voltage, current, and resistance of a resistor are related by V equals IR. In this video, we'll rearrange these variables to promote a, what I think is a more physical way of thinking about Ohm's Law, and discuss very briefly some of the limitations of Ohm's Law. So, thinking about Ohm's Law in a more physical way. As you saw in your text, Ohm's Law is often written V equals IR, where V is the voltage, I is the current, and R is the resistance. Generally, I prefer to rearrange these variables and think about it more as V over R equals I. I prefer this format because we typically control the voltage either by using a battery with a specific voltage like a 12 volt battery or a 9 volt battery or we've hooked our resistor up to the wall with a 120 volt potential difference. So the voltage we control and the resistance is a property of the material or the electronic component that you're dealing with. It's intrinsic to that item. And it's the current that changes based upon the voltage and the resistance. So let's think about Ohm's law in this way. Let's start with a simple circuit. We'll use a 12 volt battery and we'll put in a nice simple 2 ohm resistor. How much current runs through the circuit through this which we measure with this ammeter? Well the current is going to run from high potential to low potential so it's going to go this way around the circuit because remember the long bar of the battery represents high potential which means the electrons just as a reminder annoyingly go in the opposite direction because current is the way positive charge would flow but it's the electrons in a wire so how much current is there well we have a 12 volt battery and a 2 ohm resistor so the current will be 12 volts over 2 ohms which is 6 amps fairly straightforward now what if i were to replace this 2 ohm resistor with a larger 6 ohm resistor. The battery is the same. And remember, the resistance is a property of the object we put in there. What happens? Well, now we have a 12 volt battery and a 6 ohm resistor. So the current will be 12 volts over 6 ohms, 2 amps. So we can see that the amount of current coming out of the battery is not fixed. So we can see that the amount of current coming out of the battery is not fixed. This was discussed in your reading on batteries, but we can see it here. What is fixed is the potential difference. The potential difference of the battery is always 12 volts and the current coming out of the battery is dependent upon how big of a resistor we have. In addition, I also want to discuss very briefly why Ohm's law is not really a law. Ohm's law in a lot of ways is like Hooke's law for springs that you discussed in 131. It's a good approximation to a lot of things, but nothing of basic perfectly. So in 131, you might have seen this graph for the force 
versus stretch distance for DNA. And it's not linear. However, down here near a zero stretch distance, it's pretty close to linear. And so we can define a spring constant K in this region. In this particular region, the force is approximately just whatever that slope is times x. Is it perfect? No. Is it useful for that particular region? Yes. Ohm's law follows a similar idea. Almost nothing obeys Ohm's law exactly. So over here on the right, we have the IV curves of calcium currents in neurons. And we can see that it's not at all linear. It's got this complex sort of shape. However, in particular regions, say here, we can say that it is approximately linear. And thinking about Ohm's law in the formulation we just discussed as I as 1 over RV, this slope will be 1 over the resistance because that's the value of the slope on a current versus potential. So just like Hooke's law, Ohm's law isn't actually a law. It's an empirical rule derived from data that applies to a lot of materials and so is used very commonly. The last thing I want to point out in this particular video is the ubiquity of resistors. Pretty much everything can be thought of, at least in part, as a resistor. Now, the most common visual of a resistor will be just the standard incandescent light bulb. In this particular case, you can just see the resistor in the filament. That's what makes incandescent light bulbs such a good demonstrator for circuits. Another very easy resistor to visualize is the heating element on an electric stove. It's just one big resistor, and when we run current through it, it gets hot and heats your food. Some perhaps less easy to see resistors are the big tube fluorescent bulbs, but even these can be thought of as resistors. Inside a fluorescent bulb, what we have going on are we have electrons flowing down the tube, meaning our current is going, of course, the other way. But as these electrons flow down the tube, they encounter resistance to their flow by the molecules inside the tube, sometimes a little mercury vapor. And the electrons don't follow a straight line. They kind of bounce around. Their flow impeded by the mercury gas. And so there's a resistance to the flow of the electrons and even an incandescent bulb can be thought of as a resistor. Finally, an electric motor, like in a fan, can be thought of as a resistor. As, so in a circuit diagram, you might think of this fan as just a resistor. So in summary, I would encourage you to not think of Ohm's law as V equals IR, but I as V over R because we usually control the batteries, the wall, so we control the voltage. And the resistance is a property of the material, and it's the current that adapts to these two values in most situations. I would also like you to remember that nothing obeys Ohm's law perfectly. And while this is true, it's still useful because almost every single electronic device that you can think of can be thought of as a resistor. This concludes this video.